I didn't give uh, Mark the passage this morning, but we're going to be in John chapter 8. We went through this a uh, week back, so in Sunday school, and I wanted to share it this morning too as far as part of the Lord's Supper. You know, Jesus doesn't endorse the sin in people's lives. We know that, right? Because of the fact that He came and died for it. But He doesn't condemn people either. If He did, not one of us would be able to say that we know Him as our Savior. But we sometimes, as humans, we condemn people who we see them doing wrong. See? We're not to condemn them. We're to not encourage or be a part of the sin. Or We're to condemn the sin, not the person. Does that make sense? And this passage in John chapter 8 is a very good example of that. An example of how we should live our lives. And Christ gives us an example here. John 8, 1. Well, actually, 7, 53, we'll start there. Then each went to his own home. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. You know, he was always going up there, and I mentioned in Sunday school, he's always going to the Mount of Olives. I believe that that was Jesus' prayer closet. He spent a lot of time up there on the Mount of Olives in prayer. A lot of time with him, in the, just one-on-one -on -one with the Heavenly Father. We need, to find our, we need to find our Mount of Olives in our lives that we spend time with God. We go there. And that's what we do there. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law of Moses, the law of Moses commands, commanded us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? They were using the question to trap in order to have the basis to accuse him, himself. I don't really want to get into this part, but where was the man, right? Why did they only bring the woman? The Old Testament laws, both of them were to be stoned. But they only brought the woman and they stood her, not just in front of Christ, but in front of everybody who was there. See? They stood her in front of the church. And we know there's many people there because it states they came and sat down to listen to Jesus teach. And they were opportunists. So what did they do? They waited probably the proudest time, the busiest people were there, the most were there, and then they dropped this woman caught in sin in front of everybody. And now they're going to ask Jesus what he thinks they should do. See, if he said to them, stone her, then he would be in violation of Roman law. But if he said, don't stone her, then he's not endorsing the Old Testament law. So they had him kind of trapped. And sometimes we feel that way with people in our lives, right? They're out doing things they shouldn't be doing. We don't know how to handle it. Well, look, it, we don't condemn that person. We condemn the sin in their life. We love that person. And Christ gives us a very good example of it right here. Stay with me. They are using this question as a trap in order to have the basis for accusing him. They're trying to find something wrong with what Christ is teaching, right? Why? Because he's teaching everything the opposite of probably what they're teaching, right? Now stay with me. But Jesus bent down, Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. So he's doodling in the ground. There's many speculations as to what he was writing down at that time. I, you know, I'm not even going to speculate. Jesus did it for a reason, because he was getting attention. Right? Ready? When they kept questioning him, here he is, he's kneeling in the sand, he's drawing something in the sand, words or something, and guess what? They're still questioning him. And then he does what? He straightens up and he says to them, this part of Scripture to me right here is how we need to live as Christian men and women when we look at people's lives. Because we're all guilty of something from our past, and even sometimes even our thoughts. I had an incident at work this last week, and I was getting so frustrated with somebody that I just left. Because to me, even being involving myself in anger towards somebody, to me, that's an act of sin. Because I shouldn't live that way. Are you with me? Right here goes. When they kept questioning him, he straightened up and he said to them, If 
any one of you is without sin, let, he, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Wow, what a comment to make. He's giving any of them free reign, no questions asked, to stone and kill this woman, but with one stipulation. He's saying to them, if you're without sin, please, you have my blessing. Which one of us could ever stand in a room and judge somebody and say to ourselves, we're without sin? I can't do it. You know, just the sheer fact that the environment that I live in, it cultivates sin. We don't act on it as Christian men and women, right? But it's still there. If any, of, any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away, go away one at a time. Here's the part I love. The older ones first. The mature men, they went, oh. <laughs> right? They said, oh. And the younger men are standing there going, and they're watching the mature men walk away and then realizing, oh. Right? But it's interesting that the senior men left first because they heard exactly what he said and they couldn't justify to anybody that they were without sin. At this, those who heard began to, to go away, one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Not getting sidetracked, but this woman, when she walked up to this group of men, her only thought was she was going to be dragged out to the city gates and be stoned. She, in her mind, this is where she was going. Right? And here's King Jesus. What does he do? He sets it right for her. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? See? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Ready? And here's the part who Jesus is and who we, how we need to live our lives towards the person, not the sin. Ready? Then neither do I condemn you. And if anyone in that group had the right to be without sin... It was King Jesus himself. And Jesus declared, ready? Go now and leave your life of sin. See that? He's not condemning the woman. He's condemning the life she was living. He's loving the woman. Loving her so much that he was a great attorney because he got her off the death penalty. <laughs> right? That's who I want in my corner. But those are the type of people that we need to be with people around us. See? My job is not to judge somebody. My job is to love them. And how I love them is I live my life the way my Bible tells me to live so they can see that in me and want the same thing for themselves. And then they walk away from that life of sin. So here's King Jesus he says, where are the men that are here that condemn you? There's none to be found. Not one left. That, that was probably a pretty crowded <laughs> room. And they all left, except for the two. And then Jesus says, since there's not one here to condemn you, I don't condemn you either. But he's very clear at the end there when he says to her, go now and leave your life of sin. Go now and make your life right. And that's the prayer we need to have for people. Because we had envelopes. And we put names on a list. And we put... A, Paul, Paul didn't do it, I don't think. Actually, I have one for Paul. We put names on a list, right? Those names on that list that we've made, that's the list in our lives that we should be praying for daily. For those people. It might take a week and they find the Lord. Or if you were like my brother and my family, they prayed for 30 years for me. <coughs> that must have been frustrating. Right? 
Let's not condemn the person. Let's condemn the sin. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, and we just ask that you just allow us as we take the Lord's Supper today that we, we see who you are in our lives, and we want that for other people. Allow us to not to condemn the person, but to condemn the sin. And I pray this in King Jesus' name. Can I have the men come forward? I was just thinking about, you know, when things like this happen, this is life. Our lives, you know, we are out in the world walking around and we wake up and something's missing. When that happens, I tell you, spend a few minutes just reading your Bible. You know, if you don't know where to read, 1 John, start there. Then start with John. You know, those are very good books on how to live. But when life, this happens in life, we wake up, we go, oh, something's missing. Your day, you know, you're starting your day, you're like, what's missing? What's missing is maybe a little bit of time in prayer, too. While they're eating, <laughs> Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is the resurrection, guys, right here. You know what I mean? This is, this is what this is. The, the, the forgiveness of sin right here that we take this juice as a representation of what it is, but what it really is, it's, it's the representation that we know that we are forgiven. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. King Jesus, we come before you. Heavenly Father, we come before you. And Holy Spirit, we come before you. I want all three of you actively in my life as one God. Lord, allow me to be that man that doesn't condemn the person, but condemns the sin. Allow me to be that man that forgives the person and condemns the sin. Allow us to be those people who love the person and condemns the sin. So that when we, when we look at our eternal life, no one around us is left behind. That's my prayer. I pray it in King Jesus' name. Amen. I forgot the way.